show you how to get data from the USGS website so you can map out earthquakes underneath the surface of the Earth. Uh, before I do that, I want to show you uh, some of the graphics that you can use with your students. The students will need to go to know where to look for some of the earthquakes and looking at the uh, different types of boundaries, the convergent boundaries that you have like here or that you have right here in the Himalayas uh, or even this one right here. This is a convergent boundary, subduction boundary along South America. So you can get really good data there. You can get it up in Alaska. Uh, so you'll want to have them look around um, on this map to find places they're interested in um, getting their data from. And keep in mind, teach them that, that they'll need to find either horizontal data or vertical data. Um, it's, that's the best way we can do it, the most easy. Another option is to go and look for uh, volcanic activity because that also creates uh, a great place for earthquakes. So once again, the Ring of Fire is a great place, so those um, convergent boundaries. But also you can even uh, look in areas like along the Cascades here, there's a bunch of volcanoes. So if you go under Mount St. Helens, you can, you can find a lot of earthquakes there. And you can even find little spots like over in Arkansas uh, where you have these earthquakes, but they're not really available um, on this map. Okay, uh, so let's get started. Let's go find some earthquakes. Um, I am going to go to the USGS site. It's, it's, site. it's earthquakes.usgs.gov and then forward slash earthquakes forward slash search. And here you can get an archive of a lot of data. So um, we're going to look for the smallest possible because that'll give us more points and the, the graphic, the visualization will be a lot better. So let's click custom and we'll bring it down all the way down to 0.5 magnitude. And instead of the last seven days, we're going to go for the past 20 years or so. So we're going to put the start date. The start would be from 2000 and the end would be whatever the date is for you. And then uh, you may have already had your students, um, this advanced option, you may have already had them try to get their latitude and longitude. But it's a lot easier to uh, just draw a rectangle on a map. But they should have already determined where they want to go. So I am going to the Mariana's Trench because I like visualizing that one because it's pretty fantastic. And then I am going to grab my rectangle and I'm going to do a thin slice in. Oops, turned it off. I'm going to do a thin slice this way. Now we could go vertically or horizontal. We want to get a slice. We don't want to do this because then we're not getting a profile view. So we want to do that. And I'm going to grab it from here over. And then I'm going to say use this region. Check my data. Okay, so minimum 0.5 from 2000 to 2019. I got my custom coordinates. You, uh, the students will need to write those down. Uh, the latitude is going to be the, uh, you're going to want to have the, the north latitude here, which would be the greater number. And the south latitude, this is in the northern hemisphere. They, they'll need to figure that out. The south one would be the lower number. And then if you notice, this is negative 215. So they are using, uh, they are going all the way from zero going back even past the halfway point around the Earth. So we're getting negative um, 215. And that's our furthest west longitude. And then this would be our furthest east longitude. OK, uh, we have that data. Oh, look, it's written out for them there. And then output options. We want to make sure that the format is CSV. We don't want to view it on a map. We want to view, we want to download the CSV, comma separated file. And uh, let's see, we're not going to limit our events, although we could. Um, I think there's a maximum they'll give us anyway. And we're going to click search. And the data is going to download. And depending on, it's going to save it on their machines. Um, if they're on a Chromebook, it'll be on their drive. And so then we can uh, open up the file. 
So what I'm going to do is we're going to go to, um, we're going to open up Google Spreadsheets. So I think New Sheets. And we're going to have the student, you could do it in Excel as well. The instructions, the method would be slightly different. So I'm going to create a new spreadsheet. And I'm going to title it. Quake data. Okay, now I'm going to import my my the data file I just downloaded. And upload. They might need to get it from their drive if they're using a Chromebook. And I get my query. I've done a number of them. Uh, create a new spreadsheet, replace the current one. I'm just going to replace the one that I have. Why not? It's blank anyway. Okay. So our data's in. And just curious how many rows we got. We got on this one uh, 400 and some rows. That's pretty good. Now, the key here is the you notice how the depth, the depth goes up. It's actually going down. So you want to have, in order for do, to, to graph this, we're going to want this number to be negative. So to do that, we have to create a new column. So I'm going to right click on here and insert one on left. I'm going to title this um, column depth. And then we're going to add a little formula, real simple. We're going to multiply uh, the D column times negative one. So I'm going to do two, that's the cell that I want, times negative one. So that'll give me a negative number so it will be down into the earth. So our visualization will be proper. So I don't have to turn their paper upside down. Now I'm going to double click that and it should populate it, which it did. Okay, so now if they did a east-west slice, they're going to be clicking longitude longitude so they can get a visualization. If they did a north south a north south slice, they're going to be wanting be wanting to click the latitude so they can actually see what it looks like. So I did a east west slice. So I'm going to click longitude. I'm going to press control and then press my new depth column. So now when I do a scatter plot, it's going to plot all that data. And so it's simple as just clicking the insert chart or going insert chart. And there's our data. You can see uh, the structure in the earth underneath the Marianas Trench. It's fascinating that it drops suddenly and goes straight down to over 600 kilometers. So they might, uh, we're going to we're going to show you how to print them too. First of all, you need to get it off of this sheet. So there's uh, Google Sheets has a nice option here. It says a move to own sheet. And you could adjust the colors if you wanted to um, to edit the chart. But at this point, I'm just going to print it. So I'm going to file print. And to print it best, they might want to change the color from blue to black. And from these to from gray to black, so it'll print out well. Uh, but this is sufficient. And then we click print. And that's about it. There's a, you could always do the same exact task in um, Excel. I'm not going to go over that today. Have a great day.